Hey, YouTube, what's up? Anyway, I read all of chapter five. It was like 10 pages, and I got stuck with copyright because I had the f camera on the TV, and I guess a movie was playing, and they got me for copyright. 27 minutes of a recorded video down the drain. So I've been hesitating on reading chapter five, but I'm gonna get reading on it. It's selecting your tobacco and I'll do it in bits and pieces. So, selecting your tobacco. In the days when America was merely a group of colonies, the tobacco smoking was still in its infancy. A devo devotee of the pipe would simply take the tobacco leaf, crumble it in his hand, and place the shreds in the pipe bowl. He knew that if the leaf came from the base of the plant that the smoke would be strong and heavy. And if the leaf came from the center portion of the stalk, the smoke would be fairly mild. And if the leaf had grown near the top of the plant, the smoke would be very light and rather tasteless. Early American pipe smokers were also aware that the taste of the smoke varied according to the region where the tobacco plant was grown. They grew, they knew that their own Virginia leaves yielded a sweet, full bodied, full flavored smoke that Persian tobacco gave a light, mild smoke, and that acrid smoke of French tobacco was nearly unbearable. Sometime during the 19th century, smokers discovered that by blending different tobaccos, they could obtain various mixtures incorporating the best qualities of each type of tobacco. Any smoker could thus prepare his own mixture to suit his personal taste. Blending tobaccos became very popular and the practice of blending persisted so that the pipe mixture which you buy today may be a combination of as many as five or ten different tobaccos. What makes the tobacco grown in Turkey different from that grown from the same type of seed in the Carolinas? Many factors influence the quality of the smoke from a tobacco plant. Among them are the weather, altitude, soil, moisture, rainfall of the region. The cultivation is also the greatest importance. Growers must choose the proper time to pick the leaves and perform the drying, curing, and other necessary process. Just as wines derived from grapes grown in different vineyards may have many different tastes. Tobaccos from the same type of seed but growing in adjacent plantations may smoke very differently. Moreover, during the curing process, organic changes make place in the leaf, similar to the action yeast has on dough. Much of the flavor of tobacco results from the fermentation process. All these factors make tobacco blending somewhat of an art. Private blends have sometimes been handed down by tobacconists through several generations. As long as the tobaccos remain the same, so do the blends. If you wish to make up your own blend, you should first become acquainted with the flavor and the burning qualities of the various types of tobaccos. When you can experiment with small amounts of selected tobaccos, when you have a satisfactory mixture, give the formula, formula to your tobacconist and he will compound larger amounts for you upon request. Or you may find that the prepared blend suits your taste perfectly. Burley tobacco. It is reasonably safe to say that burley tobaccos are smoked in more pipes than any other variety of tobacco. Burley is probably the best tobacco for for a straight, unblended smoke. The best types of burley generally known as Kentucky burley and white burley are both clean, cool smoking tobaccos. White burley is very mild with a light flavor or aroma. Its neutral taste 
makes it ideal for mixing and reducing the strengths of heavily flavored tobaccos. Kentucky Burley, while not quite as light colored as and smooth as the white variety, it's still extremely mild when compared to some of the heavier tobaccos. Both White Burley and Kentucky Burley are actually greenish yellow or brownish yellow in color. The White Burley being somewhat lighter, hence the name. The two varieties of Burley grown mostly in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Southern Ohio. Burley forms the basis of most tobacco blends with many popular priced mixtures containing as much as 75% Burley. Burley is also popular with manufacturers because it's readily Burley is also popular with manufacturers because it readily blends with other tobaccos. If you find your tobacco blend too harsh, too sweet, or generally too highly flavored, you can add as much as 50% of Burley to your mixture. The result will be a milder blend which will yield a flavorful smoke. Virginia tobaccos. Virginia tobacco has been cultivated in Virginia ever since colonies, ever since colonist John Rolfe, husband of the Indian princess Pocahontas, first planted the seed there in 1612. Today the bulk of Virginia tobacco is grown in a much wider region including Virginia but also North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, Georgia, and Florida and Georgia. The best grade of Virginia tobacco, generally called Virginia Bright, is a light yem lemon yellow color. Other grades of Virginia tobacco vary in color from light green to brown to dark tan, depending on the soil and processing. Virginia, like Burley, can be smoked straight or used as a base for blends. When smoked alone, it has a full, light-bodied flavor and a sweet taste resulting from the high natural sugar content. Actually, Virginia tobacco resembles Burley except that it has more flavor and aroma and less oil, so that its smoke is very mild. Virginia Bright is a flu-cured tobacco processed by controlled, even smokeless heat being introduced into the curing barns by flues carrying hot air. The heat and moisture in the barn are carefully regulated during the entire curing process. Virginia Bright is usually cut fine for the pipe and therefore smokes rather fast and hot. Other types of Virginia tobacco include Virginia Bright pickings, cured and cut somewhat differently from Bright. Several leaves are processed together to form a cake, and the cake then sliced to give a coarser cut. The result is a slower burning tobacco, which yields a cooler, sweeter, more woodsy taste. Virginia plug cut is similar to the bright pickings except that it has a much coarser cut producing a cool and very rich mellow smoke. It is widely used in British blends. Virginia dark grown in different kinds of soil undergoes a fire curing process by being exposed to an open fire. This tobacco has broad dark green leaves and rarely used in pipe mixtures. Virginia Sun Cured is regional, variety grown most exclusively near the city of Richmond. Gets its name from the early practice of curing the leaves in the open sun. Today most sun cured tobaccos are actually cured in barns. Pipe smokers owe it to themselves to become familiar with all types of Virginia tobaccos, as well as the various cuts. Try each type, both as a straight smoke and as a blend. Too much Virginia in the mixture may make it bite, because the tobacco generally lacks essential oils. 
for this reason, plus the fact that it burns slowly, Virginia should not constitute more than 15% in the mixture. Cavendish tobacco. Practically all types of tobacco generally belong to one or two groups. These used as the base of a mixture such as Burley and Virginia and those used for adding flavor, taste, and aroma to the blend such as Latakia, Perique, and Turkish. But one tobacco, Cavendish, can be used both as a base and as a flavoring agent. Cavendish is said to have received its name from Lord William Cavendish, the Duke of Newcastle. When he discovered this, when he discovered this variety of tobacco around 1660, modern Cavendish differs from Virginia in that it is processed with sweetening agents such as maple sugar, sugar water, rum, honey. This gives the tobacco a dark mahogany color and a very sweet flavor. Today the word Cavendish often refers to other tobaccos such as Virginia and Maryland which have been similarly processed. The smoker may run across such varieties as Virginia Cavendish, Cavendish Wine Cured, Cavendish Dark Plug Cut, Honey Cavendish, Shredded Cavendish. Cavendish can be smoked straight and, and many others prefer it that way, but it is often blended with other base tobaccos such as Burley's and Virginia's. If you are preparing your own blend and start by mixing equal amounts of Cavendish and Burley, this will give you an idea of the use of Cavendish as a base. If you wish to keep if you wish you can keep adding Cavendish until it makes up 90 percent of the mixture. To familiarize yourself with the use of Cavendish as a flavoring agent first smoke a few pipefuls of plain white burley. Once you familiarize with the taste add about 25 percent honey Cavendish to the blend. This will yield a mild smoke with very little aroma. For more flavor, you can add a small amount of Perique, Latakia, or other flavoring tobaccos. The variety of sweetening agents such as flavor Cavendish tobaccos makes it a never-ending source of interest for the pipe smoker who enjoys experimenting with new blends. Maryland Tobacco Unlike other tobaccos, Maryland tobacco actually grows exclusively in the state from which it derives its name. It is cultivated in the southern part of Maryland between the Potomac River and Chesapeake Bay. The gray and yellow sandy soil on which the tobacco is grown must be carefully prepared. After being cut, the tobacco leaves are cured in large barns by normal ventilation of the air without artificial heat or fire. The finished leaf, thin, dry, and holding very little, holding fire very well, burns slowly, smoked plain. It is very subtle flavor. When blending, it adds little taste to the blend. For these reasons, it is often used in a mixture likely to burn rapidly with the difficulty of Maryland can also be used to reduce a strong blend and give it more neutral flavor. The Maryland tobacco crop is small and there are a few varieties. The smokers should try some plain Maryland plain Maryland they should try some plain Maryland and then add it to one of many flavoring tobaccos. As an experiment, some Maryland might be introduced to the mixture whose characteristics are already familiar to the smoker. Use Maryland sparsely when blending. The addition of as little as one part in 16 will make noticeable difference. Latakia Tobacco One harvesting season about 90 years ago, an unusually large crop of tobacco was cut from northern Syria. Much of the tobacco remained unsold and the ripe plants were huge. Ripe plants were hung from the roofs of the native houses. 
where the tobacco cured over fires used to heat the dwellings. The fuel of the region, which some say included camel dung, gave the tobacco a strong order and color never experienced before. It was found that the tobacco, when included in the blend, made an ex excellent flavor and agent. The new tobacco was discovered near the town of Latiki, which it was to obtain the name Latakia. Today the tobacco is cured over smoke of various aromatic herbs. Unlike other tobaccos, the stem, the ribs of the Latakia plant, producing the best smoke. So in, it, in its case, the entire plant, including the flowers, make up of the tobacco. The curing process instills it with a heavy sweet flavor and a dark oily appearance. As Latakia possesses a highly distinctive taste, only very small amounts are needed to a blend. One ounce to every pound is very noticeable and it would be unwise to have more than 15% Latakia in any mixture. Found in most good smoking mixture, Latakia is a fine tobacco for adding spice, natural flavor, and aroma. Perique Tobacco. Just about the time American colonies were rising in revolt against the British king, the Arcadian Frenchman named Pierre Chenette wandered into Louisiana and entered the region known as St. James Parish. There he observed the Chaucaw and Chicksaw Indians processing tobacco in a hollow log by placing it under great pressure until the tobacco's natural juices were squeezed out. The Indians would now allow the leaves to soak and ferment in their own natural juices. Chinette tested the resulting tobacco and found it to have a pronounced sweet and flavorful taste, different from that of any other tobacco. He studied the process and improved on the Indians' methods as the popularity of the new tobacco spread and became known as Tobac de Perique, since Perique was Pierre's nickname. Perique tobacco ranks as something special among the tobacco plants. For some unknown reason, it grows only in a small triangle of the land some 50 miles west, west of the city of New Orleans. All attempts to grow the Perique seeds on other soils have failed. Since Perique has such a unique flavor, 0 0.5 percent of the blend is usually sufficient. Perique adds flavor and aroma to mixtures and burns slowly and reduces the bite of fast burning tobaccos. Today Perique, Perique curing methods are essentially the same as they were when discovered by Chinette, but the process which yields this fine flavorful tobacco have remained a mystery. Turkish tobacco. Although the Western Hemisphere in this original home of the tobacco plant, many smokers feel that the world's choicest tobaccos come from parts of Turkey and other regions bordering the Black Sea. They are convinced that those tobaccos are unexcelled in aroma and flavor. The climate of the soil in Turkey is in fact ideal for growing tobacco and the plant has thrived there, gaining many desirable characteristics. Turkish tobaccos grow not only in Turkey, but also in Macedonia and part of Greece adjacent to Bulgaria and other nearby countries. The name Turkish is cured over from time when all these lands are under the hegemony of the Turks. There are many types of Turkish tobaccos as well as different ways of growing, harvesting, and curing each type. Thus, immutable variations in this finished tobacco have been the direct result of the, the direct result. The following are some of the more common types of Turkish tobaccos. Xani is one of the finest Turkish varieties, often referred to as the queen of tobaccos. It has a fresh, sweet taste, a full body, and a very pronounced aroma. 
These qualities make it suitable as the flavoring agent. It will give character to a mixture when added in small quantities. Exanti, X-A-N-T-I is what Exanti is, is how I'm saying it. Production is relatively limited. Its cultivation is centered around the Greek town of Xanti, from which it gets its name. Jabal, Jabai, D J E B E I, is very familiar to familiar to Xanti, and since it's known in the same geographical area, Dubai shares its name. Deliciously sweet flavor and grand aroma from Exani is a smaller portions. It burns and holds fire very well. It's slightly less body. Exanti therefore rates as somewhat lighter tobacco. Macedonian are tobaccos that grow in Macedonian regions of Greece. Macedonian tobaccos possesses a mild light taste, are very sweet, give off a pleasant aroma, and have excellent combustion qualities. Their mild yet fragrant character makes these tobaccos accessible both as a base and flavor and agent. Adrianople tobacco is cultivated in the peninsula which forms the European part of Turkey. One medium quality it produces a rather strong smoke and it's a, and has a neutral taste. Most Adrianople tobacco is consumed in Europe and Asia. Very little of it ever appears in this country. Smyrna is very rich tobacco grown on the west coast of Turkey. Famous for its pleasant aroma, some claim it to be the most aromatic of all tobaccos. Smyrna is a low rate combustion but has a light sweet taste which makes it a good addition to bland mixtures because of its heavily heavy aroma and it should never be allowed to predominate in the blend. Samsoni, Samson is a fine pleasant tobacco cultivated in the east central part of Turkey which where the country's north shore touches the Black Sea. It's noted that the unusual delicate agreeable taste which differs from that of only the other tobacco. Samson will improve any blend and can perk up otherwise mediocre mixture. This tobacco en also enjoys excellent burning qualities. Tran Trabison, a tobacco which grows near Samson district, possesses an unusual strong tobacco yet agreeable taste. Trisbon is usually employed to increase the strength of a mixture. Dijubek is really a Russian tobacco, although the plant is the same as a Turkish Izani. It has a light full body taste and exceptionally strong fine aroma. Many smokers consider it as the finest oriental tobacco and use it to add a touch of spice to their blends. This is only a partial list of many fine tobaccos available from the Near East Turkish tobacco. So purchased at your tobacconist may be any one of these types mentioned or it may be a mixture of several different types. Seldom smoked straight Turkish is used primarily as a flavor and agent since a little goes a long way. If you wish to do your own blending the Turkish tobaccos start by adding one part Turkish to 16 parts Burley or Virginia and you will be happily surprised by the new taste and the aroma which even this small amount of Turkish tobacco will impart to the blend. Tobacco cuts. To generally accepted methods of cutting tobacco are a result of trial and error experiments performed over many decades. All cuts are made either from single leaves or from groups that are pre groups of pressed leaves. Any cutting of the single leaf is usually termed as long cut, which slicing and press leaves or cake is referred to as plug cut. Since leaves can be broken up in a chop cut where the leaf is actually chopped into small pieces about one quarter inch square, 
the leaf can also be ribbon cut, which in which case it is sliced into long narrow strips. Chop cut tobacco is fairly slow cool burning qualities. On the other hand, the thin stringily structure of a ribbon cut tobacco and the large air spaces between the shreds make this type of cut burn fast. The combustion of plug compact plug cut tobacco is much slower than that of the chop cut ribbon cut since several layers of leaves pressed tightly together will with little space for air compose a section of plug cut. Plug cut tobacco takes a long time to ignite and even longer to burn. Accordingly it tends to give a very cool smoke. The smoker can vary the cuts of tobacco he employs as to control the rate of burning. This in turn will affect the flavor of the tobacco and will determine how many times a pipe has to be relighted. The types of cuts will also determine whether the mixture will hang together or not and the manner in which it packs into the pipe bowl. In choosing tobacco cuts, experience is the best teacher. The first step in mixing your own blend is to pay a visit to the leading tobacconist in a large city. He will usually carry <clears throat> a stock of straight, unblended tobaccos, such as Burley, Cavendish, and Latakia. If the dealer does not have that particular tobacco or cut in stock, he probably, can be, probably will be glad to order it for you. The base of the tobaccos are usually sold in quarter pound, half pound, or one pound, which are much stronger, while the much stronger aromatic and flavoring tobaccos are sold by the ounce. The dealer keeps the tobaccos in humidors and measures the correct amount of weight using a balance scale. There's some cuts there. You want to pause it and read it. And it's the four basic cuts were cube cut, burly, cut plug, long cut, and granulated Virginia. Okay. In preparing a blend at home, you can measure by volume. If you do not have a scale on hand, when you have prepared the desired amount of each tobacco, place the tobaccos in separate piles on a clean level surface, then mix the tobaccos together gently by using open fingers of both hands as forks. Keep mixing until the tobaccos are evenly distributed through the blend. Then store the mixture in your humidor. Blending tobaccos to suit your particular taste, one of the great thrills of pipe smoking is both simple and difficult to achieve. It requires no special equipment and very little time. Yet, it takes years of experience to make an intelligent appraisal on the qualities of various blends. Because of this, tobacco blending has remained an art, but it is an art which every pipe smoker can practice and enjoy. Okay, the next chapter will be chapter 6, and it will be the art and science of smoking. I do have this on a playlist. If you choose to go to the playlist, I'll have all the chapters there. You can put your earplugs in and listen to all the chapters at once. This is the Weber's Guide to Pipes, Pipes, and Pipe Smoking. Later, YouTube.